Well, I've tried. I really have. In the 22 years that I have been a pastor, I have tried to celebrate Epiphany. I mean, it sounds important, doesn't it? At my last church, they used to print the full title right up there at the top of the bulletin, The Epiphany of the Lord. Sounds like something that should be accompanied by floodlights and fanfare and maybe a circus ringmaster saying, Ladies and gentlemen, the Epiphany of the Lord. But I didn't grow up with Epiphany. Those little Presbyterian churches I went to in my childhood didn't make much of a fuss over that date on the Christian calendar. And the Baptist churches that I moved on to after that never mentioned it. But when I became a pastor, I became convinced that following the Christian calendar was a good idea. Advent, for example was four wonderful weeks of waiting and preparing for the coming of Christ. Lent was a 40-day journey with Jesus toward his death and resurrection. Both of those seasons added layer upon layer to my celebration of Christmas and Easter. I was grateful for them and thought I owed as much to the other seasons and special days on the Christian calendar. Pentecost was a good one, the birthday of the church. Trinity Sunday was not a bad one, a whole day for a single doctrine, but Epiphany? What was that really? And what was I supposed to do with it? I started with a children's sermon. On the first epiphany of my pastoral career, I sat down on the steps of the church with some children and said, Good morning, boys and girls. Today is the Sunday before January 6th. And January 6th, as all of you know, is epiphany. Can you say (laughs) epiphany? I thought you could. Epiphany is a Greek word, I told them. It means literally to shine upon. And you might think about it like this. Let's just say that you're home in bed one night and you hear a big noise out behind the house. You don't know what it is. So you get up, go down to the kitchen, get a flashlight out of the cupboard, you turn it on, you shine it around in the backyard, and that's when you see that some big dogs have gotten into the trash cans back there. Once that light shines on the dogs, you know what noise it is and where it's coming from. And that's what epiphany means. It means seeing something for what it really is. When we use the word in church, we're not talking about shining a flashlight on a bunch of noisy dogs. We're talking about the light that shined on Jesus and showed him for what he really was, the Son of God. It was not a bad children's sermon, although I did wonder later if those children forever afterward would associate Epiphany with big dogs and trash cans. (laughs) What I wanted them to associate it with is light and the one the light shines upon. Epiphany has always been associated with light. In some Christian traditions, they refer to it as the Feast of Lights. I've often wished there were some way to flood the sanctuary with light on this day. To push the dimmer switch and just hold it until the lights get brighter and brighter and brighter until you have to squint and shield your eyes against the dazzling light of epiphany. That would make the day special, wouldn't it? People showing up on the first Sunday in January wearing dark glasses, all of them or maybe feeling their way out of church afterwards, blinking, temporarily blinded, so that people walking down Monument Avenue would look and say, oh, look at there, Ethel. Must be Epiphany. (laughs) We haven't figured out how to do that yet here in the building, and so we, we do what the Church of Jesus Christ has been doing for hundreds of years now. We flood this service with references to light. Like the one from Isaiah that you heard earlier, 
Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples, but the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Maybe it's the line about kings in this passage that links it to Psalm 27, which was used as our call to worship for this morning. Isaiah talks about kings coming to the brightness of your dawn, while the psalmist talks about them coming to bow down before the chosen ruler of Israel. May the kings of Tarshish and of the isles render him tribute. May the kings of Sheba and Seba bring him gifts. May all kings fall down before him. All nations render him service. It's a short step from that psalm to this story in Matthew 2 about the wise men coming from the east to bow down before the one who has been born king of the Jews and present him with gifts. Go back to the text from Isaiah for just a moment and you will find that lo and behold the gifts they bring are gold and frankincense and praise to the Lord. Epiphany starts with light, just a flicker of starlight at first, but enough to get these wise men started on their journey. By the end of the story, light is shining down on the very house where Jesus is, revealing him as the one who has been born king of the Jews. In a way that is more than just metaphorical, it dawns on these wise men who this little boy is. And they fall down and worship him and present him with their gifts. If it were a Hollywood movie, light would fill the room and spill out onto the streets. And the people of Bethlehem would first gasp with wonder and then burst into spontaneous song and dance. It is epiphany, after all, the first epiphany ever, and reason enough to celebrate. But I'll say it again. I've tried celebrating epiphany, and for whatever reason, it has never made me feel like singing and dancing. We troop out these same old camels, these dusty wise men, that tinfoil star, year after year. We sing songs about the three kings of Orient and how they came with gold and frankincense and myrrh. Someone steps up to the pulpit and says, Arise, shine. Your light has come. The glory of the Lord has risen upon you. But is there any way in which this feels like a celebration? Let me just take a survey. How many of you here plan to celebrate on January the 6th? How many of you will be getting together with family and friends, eating, drinking, feasting, playing music? How many of you will celebrate Epiphany this year? Really? I thought so. (laughs) January 6th for most of us will be just another day on the calendar. It will be Tuesday which makes me think I still don't get it. I still don't understand or appreciate epiphany. If epiphany is always associated with light, then maybe what I need to truly and joyfully celebrate it is some experience of darkness. And so last week I searched my memory to see if there had ever been a time when I was literally or figuratively in the dark. And I remembered My brother Ed's eighth birthday, when the whole family went down into a cave on somebody's farm in southwest Virginia. All of us. We took a cake with eight candles on it. We took flashlights. Down into the cave we went. We wandered around those dark passages and finally emerged into this huge room where we set the cake down on a flat rock in the center. All gathered around, sat down. Dad asked us to turn off our flashlights, which we did. It was dark in there. 